Hi, this is Tim Santoni, and welcome to Santoni Spotlight. Today, I'm joined by Pete Fowler. Pete, thanks for joining me, man. Oh, I appreciate it's my it. pleasure. Before we get started, maybe give the viewers a little bit of sense of you, your history, your background, your career, kind of what you're doing now, and kind of set the stage for our conversation. I started digging ditches when I was 16 years old, and uh, and I've been in construction almost exclusively since that time. I, uh, after a little stint with uh, Long Hair Plan and Rock Band, I. Uh, I went to college and got a, a degree in construction management and a minor in computer information systems and started my firm in 2000. I, I was young and not very creative, so it's called Pete Fowler Construction. I, uh, I, uh, I've lamented that uh, for, for years because when people call on the phone, they, they know they, they reached the man. They, they want to talk to Pete. Right, they want to talk to Pete. Uh, but, um, but so we do three things, uh, building inspection and testing of many kinds construction management mostly related to um, uh, construction cost estimating and building rehabilitation and claims and litigation, construction claims and litigation. Anything that may ever made anybody feel sad about a building, uh, whether it's uh, it cost too much or it took too long or somebody fell down the stairs or it leaked. And then a thousand things that I never would have thought of. People call me, can you help me with this, untangle this problem? So. And then we t we testify at the end of things if if people can't sort it out. That's the that's the bottom line of our work. Gotcha. Yeah. So a typical client for you would look like what? Uh, a lawyer working for an insurance company. That's probably you know it's it ha at least half of it. It's a lawyer getting paid by an insurance company. We work for anybody who calls us as long as uh, you know some folks who do what we do. Um, they're more liberal with their. Uh, opinions depending on who's paying them sure. we you know I've told everybody from the beginning I'm a terrible liar um, so if you have a great case then I'm a great expert for you if you don't have a great case I'm a terrible expert for you but uh, so when the phone rings we answer it and so if somebody's got a problem um, we can help them sort it out we have a whole set of systems and processes that is sort of different than than uh, than any of our competitors gotcha so I usually ask people, you know, what are the top three things that that uh, that, that occur that, that cause someone to reach out? And I imagine in your business, there's probably hundreds of reasons. But maybe give us a sense of a typical scenario that, that where you guys can add most value. Obviously, and know a little bit about your background. Obviously, rooted in operations and have a lot of expertise and training and testify. Like right. I say, you're not going to lie and make up things. Is what you're referring to is that by the book, really, you know, understand what's going on and you're not going to be making up your decisions to try and manipulate juries or, or win settlements. But maybe give the, uh, our viewers a sense of kind of the, the top two or three scenarios that happen that come across into your offices, you know, that, that uh, where you guys can probably add the most value. Yeah, so most of the work, you know, it, there's so many things, but half of them are related to physical defects. So there's something wrong with the structure. And as much as construction's not, you know, we're not, uh, you know, smashing atoms together or anything. It's not inherently uh, difficult to understand. It's, uh, I, I say it all the time, it's, our work is not that complicated. We are stacking sticks and stones and pieces of metal neatly around and tying them together. But there's a million moving parts in even the simplest of buildings. There's a million moving parts. And so... Um, slapping them together out in the sunshine and the rain and the, and the wind, um, things, things happen. Things get messy in construction, on construction sites, and, uh, and a well put together building uh, lasts a lot longer and costs a lot less to maintain over time than a building that's not put together well. So, you know, whether something's leaking or there's cracks or um, what what else goes wrong? You know, whatever goes wrong with it physically, that's it's probably half of our work. Gotcha. So obviously, it's great to be in on the front end and manage the construction. Hopefully, not to get to the defects. But when those defects do arise, walk us through the process that you guys would and in, in how you would engage to actually get involved and get up to speed on what's going on. Because I think that's you know fifty percent of what you're doing. And yeah. Obviously, that's a pretty much more complicated operation and much it, it more is. risk. And when we had, so over time, you know, I'm a very process oriented person. So that's, uh, so we, uh, you know, we have a proprietary information system and we have a, every project has a project manager or coordinator and a technical expert assigned. And so they get together and they run through it literally in the office. We have posters that have the, f the process flow for every project. Um, so yeah, so we gather a bunch of information. We interview people. We, uh, organize the data in a, in, a, in a way, 
you know, frankly, the way we organize it, sometimes the cream just rises to the top and we can see for the, for the first time, nobody else, because they hadn't put all the information together, what went wrong. And, and then we just, uh, well, it, it, oftentimes we then do visual inspections. We might come back and analyze the data and decide we need to do some testing. Um, we write reports, we do construction cost estimates, we make plans and write uh, requests for proposal for, uh, for, for making repairs. And, you know, so we, we just figure out what the steps are from the messy situation that we're in to, um, to solving the problem and we're able, we're construction cost estimators, so we monetize the entire circumstance, the entire journey from messed up to not messed up. And, uh, and usually people say, oh, that's wonderful, thanks. Um, and the other side are like, ah, those guys are smart, all right, <laughs> let's just settle. Gotcha. Um, but sometimes they don't, and we have to go to trial and, and tell that story to a jury. That's very rare for us, probably. We do, we do hundreds of projects a year, and we only go to two or three trials a year. Yeah, yeah. several of those before the, the big dollars. Right. It's very expensive and silly to go to trial sure, in sure. most circumstances. So as you're working on these projects and um, you're seeing different things, maybe give us an example of the most recent kind of client project you worked on that was most interesting or... or brings to light some, some interesting circumstances. I know we've had a lot of rain lately, so maybe it's a flood or maybe it's something else, but I know you do work in a lot of different states, but what, what, give us an example of a, a recent engagement. Um, so we've got, um, I, I've got one going where the, uh, you know, we have these, um, I, ju I just gave a proposal to speak at a, at a symposium on this subject. And it, uh, I, the title is something like, um, I built myself a monument, or I built a monument to myself and you ruined it. So, you know, we, we are forever working on homes that are, you know, 25,000 square feet and cost, you know, $25 million. And, uh, and they, they litigate at a far disproportionate rate to, you know, if we have a track home, the, you know, no, people are arguing about them less. So, um, so I've got one that's coming up and it's going to trial because they, the people just hate each other. And it's not because, you know, we could have sorted out the physical issues long ago. No, they just hate each other. <laughs> and it's, it's sad, and thankfully that doesn't happen a lot to us because it's, it's just weird and sad to, to have those kind of arguments. Because most, most of the problems that we deal with, there really are problems. Mm -hmm. and, um, and as much as there's a bunch of, you know, anytime you get lawyers and, you know, uh, and, and uh, people grandstanding and things, but, but ultimately there's a problem, it needs a solution, and usually what happens is something pretty sensible. But every once in a while there's, you know, there's a movie star or or someone, you know, with yeah. a giant, you know, an outsized ego or yeah. something. It's, it's emotions get involved, everything goes out the window. It does, right? it does. So a question, I mean this may be a silly question, but as you're working on these these losses and you're getting involved in claims and everything and you're proposing you're looking at the fixes. How often will they say, okay, now that you've gone through all this process, rather than litigating this, like, hey, we'll engage with you to manage the project and actually fix what's broken and get it back operable, functioning, you know, you know, in good repair? Yeah, that's, a, it, that's approximately the same rate okay. that we go to trial. <laughs> um, but uh, actually, it's, it's more than that. Um, and, and I like those a lot because um, I think different than some of our competitors, uh, who haven't done any real work in 25 years? We always have real construction work going on. So, and when you say they haven't done the real work, because they're just really trial consultants and experts, and they actually right. don't do construction work a anymore. Okay. You know, everybody used to. It's sort of the the, the key into the door is you used to be in construction, construction. Really, that's probably where you would get the skills to be able to become an expert, right? That's right. Okay. That's right. It, you know, and 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 to to be a, an expert, you know, if you're talking about microbiology, it's the, you know, there's there's a certain to be an expert in construction, really, it's the bar's low. It's, it's, it's really, we're, we're simple creatures, right? I got a degree in construction management for a reason. I didn't want to compete with people who have a degree in law, right? Yeah, it's good. Uh, but but it's, um, I, I love when the other side comes to me and out at the end of the litigation and they go, you know, our expert solution seems not that sensible, but your solution seem pretty sensible. Will you actually do what you said during the litigation? And yes, yes, yes. So that's our that's our take when we're doing the analysis in our office. Um, you know, sometimes I'll get a construction cost estimate to review from one of the estimators in the office, and I and I go, this feels light. Are could we really do this if they if they said you know Bob 
we love your estimate. Go do it. Would, would we lose money doing this work if we said yes? And they're like, all right, let me go look at it again. They scurry back to the office. Since, you know, oftentimes they come back, no, no, we can do it. Right. But that's kind of the, the, the principle that you guys it's operate on is if you were actually going to do the work, what would it be? Not just some fabricated number or what sounds that's good right. or what it would make. That's right. That's Again, going back to I learned when I was seven that I was a bad liar, so <laughs> I, don't, I don't want that. And, uh, and, and I, last Thursday, we have a, we have a, every Tuesday and Thursday, we have a technical huddle with our, all of our experts get on the phone together. Some of them are, you know, if they're in the office, we get together, but, and, uh, and, and we, it's, it's so gratifying. I get to hear, um, I hear it personally, I go to meetings and, and people say, oh man, when your, when your office is on a, is on one of these files, cause I don't do it that much anymore. Mm -hmm. Everybody else goes to right. these big meetings. When your office is on these, I always say, Hey, is Pete Dollar's office on this case? Did they do an estimate? Can I see their estimate? He's like, because I know you guys are sensible. You know, you're not too high, you're not too low, you're sensible people, it's the right numbers. And uh, one of the guys at our last technical huddle, he said, I had, a, I had a lawyer follow me around three times said to me, oh, I'm so glad you guys are on this case. We, 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 we trust your reports. He's like, he wasn't even our client. He's following me around telling me that. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't even our client. So it's, so, that's, that, that, that makes me feel great. Right, I, I I love that. Yeah, I just always practice. wanted to work with smart people who had integrity. Gotcha. And so you say that you know you, construction is simple and easy, but your operation is very complex. You have those processes in place. Uh, before we go, maybe give a sense of the scope of your operation, where your offices are located, and kind of where your clients are. So we, I started. I uh, I grew up in North County, San Diego. And uh, yeah, after I got out of college, I moved back as far as Orange County. So I have an office in San Clemente. Uh, we just recently, our most recent office is in Corona. I haven't even visited it yet. Uh, it's only about, I don't know, six weeks old. I should go sometime. But um, we also have an office in Las Vegas and uh, have had an office in Portland, Oregon since 2005. And, uh, and then just earlier this year, we started operations in Orlando, Florida. Wow. Yeah. So you're covering it. Yes. I don't go there much, but I, uh, my first boss, I bought his business because he wanted to move to Orlando. So we uh, run what was his operation here, and he's running our operation in Florida now. Very so, cool. Yeah, it's fun. It's awesome. Well, Pete, before we let you go, maybe give us a sense of when you're not um, you know, consulting on construction projects and, and working with your team to optimize results in litigation, where do you like to spend your free time? So I bounce, I used to bounce between um, Orange County. I raised my children in Portland, Oregon. I moved them uh, when they were little and raised them up there. And so I, uh, I got used to having two homes in, in, in two very different places. So I've, I've since moved to, uh, to back to North County, San Diego. And uh, and I have a place in Las Vegas, so I go between those places. So uh, so I, I spend my time. Um, I work out and I uh, I eat in nice restaurants. This is it's almost you know I read books. Uh, you know it's not it's not that exciting life. Although I you know of course I like it because I like Las Vegas because there's uh, there's shows. I, I said I used to play music, mm -hmm. so I go to shows all the time. I, what to do? Yeah, that's uh, I'm um, I'm a recent empty nester. Uh -huh. We were talking about yes. your four yeah. children. Yeah. I uh, I was a very very involved father, so I thought that I would be lonely. Nope. Grinding <laughs> hobbies quickly. Right. It's uh, having a great time awesome. with with that. So yeah. Very cool. Well, we'll link up all of Pete's information and in, and in also information to his company down in the description below. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. We'll make sure one of us gets back to you. Thanks for joining the show, man. Appreciate Thank you. you.